Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today, we're going to be dealing with SAP Business One, and we're going to talk about the function of data import and export. For the purpose of the demo today, we're using SAP Business One version 8.82. And what we're going to talk about is the data import and export, a nice little functionality that's built into SAP, which allows us to import from Excel, business partner information as well as item information. We can also export data from SAP Business One as well as import data from SAP Business One. So let's talk about um, how this functionality works. We're going to go into administration, and here we have the data import export. So we can do data import. We can import from Excel. We can also import transactions from SAP Business One. And we can do a data export from SAP Business One. The nice thing about the importing and exporting of the Business One transactions, this is very useful for consolidation. <laughs> we have clients that we may have two separate companies in SAP, two separate databases. And what they want to do is they want to run con consolidated financials. So what we do in this case, we can create a third database for the consolidation. And then I'll show you how easy it is to just go ahead and extract the information from the two databases and then import it into the third or the consolidated database. So we'll talk about that today also. So let's talk about the import from Excel. For purpose today, I'm going to do a simple um, example. What we do is we have a text file. Let me just. Uh, show you the text file. So we have a um, customer file. And again, this is just from Excel. This is a simple Excel spreadsheet. And we saved it as a uh, tab delimited file. In this case, we're just going to deal with three columns. We're going to deal with um, a business partner code, the business partner name, and then the business partner type. So here you can see we're going to import a business partner code C1. The name is going to be customer for demo. And the type is C for customer. We're going to import a vendor. Code's going to be B1. Name's going to be vendor for demo. And then the code of the vendor type is S. This information is available in our system. We also have another webinar series on how to extract that. I'll show you that a little bit today. But we do have details for the query generations and how to see what the different types of fields are and what is the defaults in those fields. I'm also going to do the example of an item. So here again, I have an item. And this I'm just going to, all I'm going to do is I'm going to create an item number and a name. So I'm going to create this information. So we have our files here. So before we begin, let's talk about, again, a brief how to find out what the names are. So if we go to Business Partners and we go to Business Partner Master, we're going to go ahead and we're going to import here. So we're going to do the code, the name, and the type. You have the types here. And again, to find this information, and there's other webinars on, um, on our website to go into more detail. But what we can do very simple is we can go to View, System Information. And then if we kind of hover over the field, you will see below down here the name. So you can see here that we're looking at the card code. You can see the card type, and so on. So if we go over these fields, there's a card name and so on. So you can see that this field here is called Phone 1 and Phone 2. This is helpful when we're actually going to create the template and set up, because we'll need to have these fields. And again, you can also do that functionality. Since I have that turned on, the system information is on. You can see the same here with the inventory item. So again, if you notice down here at the bottom of the screen, if I hover over field, you can see that the form description, you can see the name below, FRG and name, and so on. So let's talk about that, and let's actually now import that. We'll do a simple one. So we're going to go to administration. We're going to go to data import, export, and we're going to do a data import. And we're going to import from Excel. So here's our two choices. And we can do BPs or items. And once we define this, we can actually save the template, which I'll show you too. Okay. Here we have the option of updating existing records. If I turn this on, 
and I happen to want to update. So for example, if I already had the customers created, but I just want to add a field. Like let's say I have customers and I didn't have the phone number, so I want to go just add the phone number. I would choose update existing records. If I delete this, I'm just going to be adding new records. Right? So here is again our columns, and these are our columns relative to Excel. So we have all these columns here. So we're going to go now to field one. We're going to do our drop down, and we're going to select the BP code. We're going to go to column B. We're going to select the uh, BP name. And you notice that once I select the code, like for example, since BP code is here, it's no longer available on the list. This keeps us from making the mistake of accidentally selecting something twice. So we'll see that. And again, once we go back in, we no longer have the BP name or code. And we're going to select type. Okay. We can keep this if we exit. I don't want to do it. If we exit and come back in, we can see we can keep it. If we want to clear, we can clear and start again. And again, you'll see them all here. And the type. We can also save as. You can see our templates up here. So we can do a save as. And we can call this uh, BP demo. So now here when you look, again if we wanted to, we can just easily pull it up. So again, that functionality is available if you just want to if you can you use a lot of these. So if you want to create a you know a complicated template for bringing data in, um, and you're doing this, you know, I don't know, maybe you're bringing items in, you know, you're updating items from a catalog or something, you're doing it on a weekly or monthly basis, you can just save the templates. So again, very simple. We have this now. So let's import. We're going to click OK. It's going to prompt us for our file. So we put this on the desktop. And we can see the customer import. I'm going to open that. And we can see down here that two records imported successfully. We see it from our green line. So let's go now into our VP. And we should have created, uh, I believe we did C1. So if we do our find, we can see that we created C1. We can see it's a customer and a name customer for demo. We do our V1 and we find Again, we can see that information. So very simple. We've created those. We could have added all these different fields in here. So again, very simple, very powerful. Let's do it now with the, we can do the same with the inventory. So let's go into administration, data import, export, data import. And we're going to do an import from Excel. Again, we can go to items. And here we're going to again select, really we just had the item number, and here we had the item description. So again, we can save the templates if we want. We have the same thing, update existing records, update accounts, and existing items. Again, you have the option of updating or just defining new if you want. Again, it depends what you're doing. So and this would be the same case. Maybe we are have existing items and we're updating the manufacturer or we're changing the group types. Again, you want to just select that. Same principle, we click OK. We select our file. So I'm going to go to the desktop. And I have this. And click open. And you can see down below here it says one record was imported successfully. Just going to cancel that. And if we go to our inventory and I believe we just called that number one. So we can see here that, again, item number one and item for demo. So again, very easy functionality, very easy to work with. It's very good for, um, um, again, updating, bringing in customers, uh, bringing in um, items. 
most of the time this is used really for updating because there are some limitations. You know, it's a user design. There are some limitations. You know, the the the, um, the DTW, the Data Transfer Workbench, has a lot more functionality as far as data conversion. But here again, this is nice for the for the end user. This is for simple updates. We want to you know add fields to the uh, business partners or items or make changes. So we can do that. <laughs> the other functionality that we're going to look at is the importing and exporting of the actual transactions <laughs> in SAP. So for example here, let's start with a data export and let's export transactions from SAP Business One. And you can see here we can choose what we want to take out. We can select all these, or in this case, we're going to look at, say, just journal entries that were posted in this month. And I'm using this example because, again, this is a good example for the consolidation a lot of people use this for. If I go into uh, my financials, let's say, my financial reports, then under accounting, we look at the transaction journal. And we're going to look here at all the journal entries that were in November. So if we click this, we can see here that we have these transactions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine transactions. So remember that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these out of the um, data. Because again, we're just doing this for, let's say, consolidated financials. So I want all my journal entries. So I'm going to take these out and I'm going to bring them back in. Again, for purpose of the demo, I'm just using one database. But what you would do is you would log into the first company, extract the data, log into the second company, extract the data. And again, these will be saved in files. And then you would go into the consolidated company or the third company, and then you would import. OK, so let's just look at that. So again, we're going to go very simple. We're going to say journal entries from that time. We're going to click OK. OK, we're going to create a file. Here's the file name. And again, we can rename it. So we can say whatever transactions for, um, for November from company one or so on. I'm just going to leave it like that. You can see I already have a file, so it's just going to ask me to replace it. Again. So now the export was complete. So I have that file with the nine transactions. So let's go in. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a journal voucher. Let me just open up the journal voucher to make sure it's blank. Okay, so we can see what's happening. So you can see here there's no journal vouchers available. And again, this is nice functionality because what we're doing is we're creating a journal voucher. And again, we have other webinars on the financial side, but a journal voucher is kind of a temporary journal entry. So it allows us to bring this data in and then analyze it, make any changes to it before we actually post it and create the journal entry. So let's go here to administration. So now we're going to go to data import. And we're going to import the transactions from SAP. We're going to grab the file we just did, which is here. And you can see here that import transactions from SAP. Journal voucher number seven was created. And there's the nine transactions in journal voucher seven. Again, we saw those nine transactions that were in there. So. If we go in and we open up the journal voucher, you can see here that journal voucher 7 was created. And you can see the nine transactions. Let's open it up and take a look. So let's go now to our report. Let's put these next to each other. So again, if we see this first transaction, you can see the $7. So again, if we just click on, double click on here and open it, we can see the information that came in. So we brought the information in. Again, the dates are the same, and we simulated that transaction. So again, all nine came in. Very simple. So now I have the ability of making any changes I want to this. So since they're in a voucher form, I can do any changes, or I can open these up, make a change. You can see the remarks. I may want to change the remark. 
say that this is the data from company one. And when I'm ready, I do a simple post. Once I post this voucher, this voucher will actually become permanent and will update. So again, very simple um, program to use, but it's very powerful. And again, it's used for a couple reasons. Um, majority of our clients use the data import and export of SAP Business One transactions for consolidation. It's very good. And then what I would do is in my consolidated company, I would set up my financials and run them that way. So let's recap again what we've seen. In SAP, we can go to administration. We can do a data import export. We have data import. Here we can import from Excel. We can import business partners as well as items. We can set up a template, so if we clear this, we can actually see that we created this template. We're going to select that template. And we can bring that template in. Select that template. And we can bring that template in. All we do here is we have an Excel spreadsheet. The Excel spreadsheet has no header record. We would just define our Excel spreadsheet, and we would put the corresponding columns. So the key here is that, in the purpose of this demo, my Excel spreadsheet must have the BP code in column A, must have the BP name in column B, and the type in C. Again, <laughs> this is good for a lot of times on the inventory side or even customers. A lot of people get customer lists. They get some leads, uh, and they want to bring in their leads for business types. Again, you can define them, you can manipulate the Excel spreadsheet, and it's just a matter of once you have it set up, you click OK. You would select, again, I have it here on the desktop, and you can see the two records were imported. I have updated existing records, so those fields came in. You can also do that with the items. Again, same principle here, you would go and select all your corresponding fields, and you would use this for items. And again, this is used a lot from clients for, um, like I said, on the inventory side, we have a lot of it for updating maybe catalogs or manufacturers or information about the items or even the items themselves from, say, catalogs. The business partners, it's used a lot for the, um, the leads, and what we talked about in our business partner types. We have three types of business partners. We have customers, vendors, and leads. A lot of times what people do is they'll use this to bring in leads from, um, from different sources, and they can have it set up that way. And the exporting, you can do exporting and importing from SAP. So we're going to look here at the data export. Again, you can select what you want to export from a given database. In this case, we just did journal entries, but what I can do is I can select maybe journal entries, or I can select maybe AR invoices and so on, whatever I need to export out. I can run this program. What it's going to do, it's going to create a file. Again, it's going to be a uh, tab delimited file. And then what I can do is on the other end, I can do the importing, and then I can pull that file and then import that file. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a journal voucher. So if we run that again, you're going to see now it created journal voucher number eight, again, for those transactions. Now I have two journal vouchers. So that would be the principle of what I talked about if we're doing a consolidation. So if I go to my financials and I go to my journal vouchers, you can now I have seven and eight. Again, seven would be from the first company transactions, in this case, would be the second company. So I'm in my third company. My, I'm in my consolidated company. I imported from the first two companies. And then once I post all this, it's going to have a consolidated financials. So again, very powerful tool, very simple tool, all done in SAP. OK, so that concludes today's uh, webinar on the SAP Business One functionality of data import and export. This is going to be on our website. So we're recording this. It'll be available on our website. You can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this plus all our other videos.
and once again, we thank you for your time.